Um, the, the book is very much a book of hope, and I think one of the elements in there that um, creates this hopeful tenor to the discussion is this insight, this understanding of the links between the scientific endeavor and the human endeavor, and how they actually go together, that they're interconnected, and it just takes a little thought and a little perception to understand that deeply, not to see them as separate and apart from each other. So that kind of ties into the education story. You've been very much involved in uh, educational activities in a, in a number of venues. Uh, when we take a look at the type of world we live in, and I, I agree with you, since I work in the edu industry, uh, I deal with these problems every day, and how do we engender, what are some possibilities of ways of engendering that enthusiasm, that excitement that real learning does bring when you're really engaged in your learning? When the innovation turns you on, how do we how do we actually get to that point in, in the sort of mass edu factories that we run these days, which on the one hand open the doors, they give access to many people to possibilities which they might not have had a hundred years ago, but at the same time that standardization, the pressure of numbers, as we all know, because we've all gone to school, sometimes works very much against the excitement and the enthusiasm of learning. Any ideas of what we can do in the sort of mass education world we're living in? Yeah, I think that there's a lot of dissatisfaction with uh, education today, uh, whether it's school or university. Um, and as you say, a lot of the <coughs> problems have arisen because, uh, because of mass access to education and the need to standardize um, and reduce everything to a to some predefined tasks that students have to perform. Um, my own experience in education, I'm not a, you know, I, I kind of fell into my educational role because I helped to start a uh, training center, a, a postgraduate study center in South Africa. Um, and uh, I did that out of a belief that this was really important for Africa, that people in Africa had access to advanced science, just as they do elsewhere in the world. But, uh, so I kind of stumbled into the educational field, because I thought this was something uh, uh, important to happen. And I had some friends who were very good lecturers, and I could drag them in. But that experience has basically taught me that um, if you organize education in a very small scale, you know, maximum 50 to 100 students within an institution, then that institution becomes much more like a family and much freer. Uh, it's a much more intense experience. And, you know, simple things like the diversity of the student body. I mean, at our centers in Africa, you have uh, students from all over Africa they come from, typically, there'll be 20 different, 20, uh, say 50 students from 20 different countries. That diversity is incredible stimulus because the students do much, most of the, you know, mostly they are teaching each other about how different cultures look at things, about um, how everybody, everybody's ideas matter. Um, and so I've basically formed the opinion that the only way to really revitalize and refresh the education system which we have, is to go away from the industrial scale uh, institutions and to create small, if you like, boutique educational centers where much more free-thinking people teach and students learn and, and, and so on. And I, I think this will become more and more the norm, is that um, education should, in my view, become much less standardized and much more diverse. Um, I think a great thing about today is that kids are accessing the internet on their own, so they supplement what they learn at school with the really cool stuff. And what I saw across Canada, in fact in my last lecture in Toronto, there was uh, an 11 year old, uh, an 11, 11 year old kid from um, Stratford, you know, who was asking me about black holes and uh, very good questions. He, he now has a tutor at Perimeter Institute. Uh, <laughs> he comes and meets uh, every week. Um, but, uh, but I think that's incredibly important, 
that kids who become switched on to some exciting topic, you know, in their early years, should really be encouraged to follow that. Um, there's no reason why kids can't get into very advanced stuff when they're teenagers. No reason at all. You know, David Hume, the the philosopher, one of the greatest philosophers in history, went to university at age 12. And, uh, you know, did four years in university, and then he wrote his philosophical masterpiece in the next, next eight years. Are there kids today doing that? I don't think so. But I think we need to create a system where they can do that. 